ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد we give thanks to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May the blessing and peace be upon the noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah, this is going to be a continuation of the explanation of the book Al-Muharrar by Al-Imam Ibn Abdul Hadi rahimahullah ta'ala still on ablution still on ablution last week we took the hadith of Qumran the first leave of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu today inshallah we'll be taking another hadith an fitri an abi farwa عن عبد الرحمن بن ابي ليلى قال رايت عليا توضا فغسل وجهه ثلاثا وغسل ذراعيه ثلاثا ومسع براسه واحده ثم قال هكذا اضوه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رواه ابو داود and Ziyad bin Ayyub and Ubaidillah, Musa and Fitr, Warwatu Usadiqoon, Mukharraj Lawm Fis Sahih, Wa Abu Farwa Ismu Muslim bin Salim al Juhani. This is another hadith on ablution. Abdurrahman, the son of Abu Layla, said that I saw Ali. Tawadda perform ablution. I saw Ali radiallahu anhu perform ablution. Fagasala wajhahu salasa. He washed his face three times. Wagasala dhira'i salasa. He washed his two hands three times. Fagasaha ومسح براسي واحدا he wiped his hair once ثم قال after that he said هكذا وضوه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم does which the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم perform ablution so this was reported by Abu Dawood from those that Al Hafiz Ibn Habd al-Adi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. Now if we look at this hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu, the way he performed ablution. He said he washed his face three times, which agrees with that of Uthman radiallahu anhu, his two hands, he washed them three times. So he wiped his head once, so they still agree. And he said, this is the ablution of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had different ways of performing ablution. So at times, he would do the aspects of ablution three times, washing of the face three times, the hands three times, the... Uh, legs 
You watch three times as we read in the previous hadith. So wiping of the earth, this it will do uh, most of the time once by wiping the edge front and back front to back then back to to front so we'll do this so this hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu is like uh, uh, a part of the hadith of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu when Amr bin Yahya al-Mazini from Amru, the son of Yahya al-Mazini, and Abi from his father, Qal, he said, Shahidtu Amran ibn Abi Asan, Salah Abdullah ibn Zaydin and Udu in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I witnessed Amru, the son of Abu Hassan, asking Abdullah ibn Zaid, Concerning the ablution of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abdullah ibn Zaid here is different from Abdullah ibn Zaid ibn Abdul Rabbi, the one who reported the hadith of uh, Azan. This one is Abdullah ibn Zaid. Abdullah ibn Zaid. This is different from Abdullah ibn Zaid ibn Abdi Rabbi, who reported that of Azan. So Abdullah bin Zaid also talked about the uh, ablution of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, that he is uh, Sa'al Abdullah bin Zaid and Udui Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the Abi Tawr. Amr bin Abi Hassan asked Abdullah bin Zaid concerning the ablution of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Abdullah bin Zaid ordered for be towering for a bow min main of water. Fatawadda lahum. He performed ablution to show them the way the messenger of Allah will perform ablution. Fakafa'u fakafa'u ala yadihi ala yadihi. He poured, he tilted the bow in order to pour water on his two hands. Father Salah Umar Salasa, he washed them three times. He washed the palms three times. Thumma atkala yada ufil ina. After that, he put his hand in the bowl. Fahmad Mado, he took water from the bowl and he rinsed his mouth. Was turning shako. After that, he exhaled, in, 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 in ale, was turned thara thalatha, and exhaled water, bi thalathi gharafati mimma, using three armfuls of water, three armfuls of water. We explained the way to do the rinsing, the inhaling and exhaling of the mouth. We said, if one takes water, one puts water in one's mouth, rinses the, uh, the, the mouth, the leftover water will be inhaled and exhaled. That will be one. That will be one. So this is with one gharfa, with one and full of water. Then the second one is to take a handful of water again. Then one will rinse one's mouth with it. Inhale water and also exhale it. That will be the second one. Then the third one is like that. So this is the best way of doing it. Taking a handful of water, putting it in one's mouth, rinsing the mouth, what is left of water, one inhales it and one exhales it. That's one. One repeats it the second time and repeats it the third time. This is the best. 
But there are some other ways that people do it. The most important thing is to rinse the mouth and to inhale and exhale water. To inhale and exhale water. That is the best way of doing it. That is the best way of doing it. So, the Sahabi, Abdullah bin Zaid, Abdullah bin Zaid, described the ablution of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, he took water, when he tilted the bow, he poured water on his hands, then he washed them three times. He put his hand in the bowl. Famad Mado, he reached his mouth. Wastan Shaka, he inhales, he inhaled water. Wastan Thara, exhaled the water. Thalatha, Thalatha, three times. Bithalathi Garafat, he did this with three armfuls of water. Mimai. Then after that, he put his hand in the water. Then he washed his two hands up to the elbows. Marratain twice. In the hadith of Uthman bin Affan, he did this three times. But in this hadith of Abdullah bin Zaid, Al Mazini, the washing of the hand up to the elbow was done two times. Then he put his hand in the water, in the bowl. He wiped his head. He took his hand back and front. So in one of the reports, so as we have it here, that Bada Abi Muqaddami Ra'asihi Ila Akhiri Qafa he started with the forehead then to the uh, back of the head. So that is the meaning of Fa'aqbala we mentioned last week that most scholars are of the opinion that you have to wipe all the edge like this. Unless if you are putting on turban or something that is very difficult to remove, then you can wipe the foredge, then you complete the wiping on the turban or so. This is what most scholars are upon. However, we mentioned that the Shafi'iya, to them, it is not compulsory to wipe the whole edge. If you wipe part of the edge, to them, you have done what is uh, compulsory. Wiping the whole edge will be Sunnah. And this is backed with some arguments in the language, the Arabic language which I mentioned the other time, that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is, wipe your edge. Wipe your head, does it mean wipe the old edge? Or just rub part of the edge? He said a typical example is, when somebody rub his hand on the wall, we say what? He rub his hand on the wall. Does that mean that he rubbed the old wall? with his hand, or he rubbed part of the, his hand on part of the wall. So this is their argument. This, however, as mentioned last week, was uh, further buttressed with the author of Abdullah bin Umar, who would wipe part of his, uh, his head. But to be on the safe side, wiping the old edge is better in order to go out of the difference of opinion of the scholars. 
So the companion said, or uh, the companion that is Abdullah bin Zaid was reported to have wiped his head for Akbar Labi Yadehi wa Adbara Bihima. He took the two hands to the back and bring them forth. This is the way we will explain it. For Akbar. If we want to go by what we have in the text, we say for Akbala bi ima wa adbara. It started from the back. Huh? Wa adbara and he returned it back to the from the front back to the left. If we want to go by what we have in the text. But this was further explained that Bada Abi Muqadda Mirasi it started from the forehead. So for Akbar Labi Ima wa Adbara, the wow there for Akbar Labi Ima wa Adbara, so we just mean that a rub boots the back and the, the front. So now he used the two hands. He used the two hands. Last week we forgot to mention the face. Is it enough to make use of one palm? one hand to do that or it is composite to use the two hands it's not composite to use the two hands when you are washing the face but it is better because you're able to take enough water and as you are placing it like this it covers unlike trying to use the use one hand to do it it will take you time to do it so, and that's why it was reported in some of the reports as contains Sahih Bukhari and some other books that he used two hands to do that. If he used one hand, no harm. What matters is that you allow the water to get to the necessary places. You start from the forehead here, where the air starts growing, then you take it to very close to the ear like this uh, and the other side too you bring it down to the shin here uh, this is how to do it this is how to do it so the person that has beers the one that has beers if the beers is not much then we'll have to do the washing to get to the skin if the beard is not much. But if the beard is much and thick, so just taking care of the upper part of it will be enough. Taking care of the upper part of it will be enough. So, but if the beard is not much that you can see the skin, you can see through. Then in that case, water has to get to the skin. But if the beard is thick, you can't see through, then taking care of the upper part is considered as a wiping it. Then it is good that one does what is called tahlilu lihya to try to pass the hands, the fingers through the, the beards. To pass the fingers through the beers so that the water will still go down you can't see the skin so you can't say you should go and wash your skin that will be difficult but the upper part you wash uh, and you make sure that the water go down the water go down so after that he put his hand in the bowl and he used the water to wash, to wash his two feet up to the ankle. For call after that he said, "Hakada ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yatawabda." This is how I saw the Messenger of Allah perform ablution. Wafiri waya in a report. Famad Mado, he rinsed his mouth. Wastan Thara, he exhaled water. He exhaled water. He would not 
have exhaled water if he had, he had not inhaled water. Thalatha marratin, three times. Min garfatin wahidatin. From one armful of water. And that's why some people have the opinion that one armful of water that you take, you put it in your mouth, there will still be some. Then you pour the water out, then little out of it is what you are still going to use. That is, the armful of water you take, you apply it three times. The little that is left, huh? that is using just one armful of water to do it. Some they use this hadith as explanation. I mean, wahida from one garfa. But if you look at what was said before, said what salath means salathi garafat from three garafat. How this is claimed? That is from three garafat, not from one garfa. But this name means garfatin wahida. As I've said, the most important thing is that you allow water to touch the necessary place. You allow water to touch the necessary place. Whether it is one garfa you use for your rinsing of the mouth and you use it three times, whatever is left, you inhale it, exhale it. Whatever is left, uh, you still inhale, exhale. The third time you do that, this still goes as long as the water has touched the uh, necessary place. Wafi riwaya in the report, Bada'a bi muqaddami ra'si, it started with the four edge, hatta dha'aba bihima ila kafahu, till he gets to the end of the edge. I said earlier that we know of what akbala wa adbara, akbala bihima wa adbara. Eh? It took them to the front and to the back. The way we explain this is what Bada Abi Muqadda Miras, he started with the forehead, then he took it to the back. Let's assume, if somebody wants to perform ablution and he starts from the back, eh, the wiping of the head starts from the back to the front, does he have ablution? Yes, he has. He has. He has done the master ras if he starts from the back and bring it to the front. But which one is the best? The best is to start from the front and take it to the back. But if he changes it by starting from the back to the front, you can say the person does not have what? Ablution. So mutafakun thumma umayl al makani ladhi bada aminhu then he returned the two palms to where he started from. That is the front. So we mentioned uh, the other time that uh, it is sunnah to start with the right side. Let's assume somebody wants to perform ablution and the person starts from the left. He wash the left hand first before washing the right. Huh? The ablution goes. This is a sabish from Ali Raji Allah Anu. But the best is to start from the right. It is sunnah to start from the right. But if somebody starts from the left, it goes. It is better to start from the forehead, wiping back. If somebody starts from the back and brings it forth, this also goes. It is better for you to rinse your mouth from three garafat, three armful of water. The first one, you rinse your mouth with it. Whatever is left, you inhale and exhale. You repeat that the second time. You repeat it the third time. So this is the best. This is the best. But if one does it with just one garfa, it's permissible. 
Or one does it separately. You take water for the reason of the mouth. Huh? You take water to inhale, exhale. Then you repeat it the second time like that. Different water. Using to rinse the mouth, different water to inhale. It goes. So we have what is called what? Al-Jam'u wal Faslu. To combine them and to separate them. Al-Jam'u. This is the best. But when you do Faslu, you, you break them. This also goes. It also goes. The most important thing is that water gets to where it's supposed to get to. We mentioned, you want to perform ablution. You put your hand in the bowl, for instance, after washing, or if you want to wash it, uh, you wash this side first. After you have done this three times, then you proceed to the left. You do three times again. It goes. You wash both at, at, at the same time. It goes. It goes. So the most important thing is that what you do the, the washing. We also mentioned, let's assume somebody wants to perform ablution. And he does not wash his palms and the back of the palms. He just goes straight to the washing of the face. Does it have, have, have ablution? Does he have ablution? According to the majority of the scholar, he has. To them, washing of the hands, that is the palms and the back of the palms, rinsing of the mouth, inhaling and exhaling water, they are not compulsory. I said that to the Hanabila, rinsing of the mouth, inhaling, exhaling is what? Is compulsory, not washing of the palms. Washing of the palms, there are almost agreement that is not compulsory. But wash, washing of the mouth, that is rinsing of the mouth, inhaling and exhaling, ha, majority said not compulsory. Minority said what? It is compulsory. And we brought the argument of both parties last week. And we said to be on the safe side, wash your mouth, rinse your mouth, inhale and exhale water. Because the messenger of Allah, Allah, Salam, would hardly perform an ablution without doing that. Without doing that. So it is better to stick to that. So when you look at the hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu that we read earlier, so uh, you see that it was said that he washed his face three times. He washed his face three times. Then he proceeded to watch to the ants. The mention of the mouth uh, did not come there. You look at the hadith of Abdullah ibn Zaj al-Mazini. He mentioned Famad mother was tan shaka was tan thara. Famad mother was tan shaka was tan You look at the hadith of uh, Uthman bin Affan. Reason of the mouth was also mentioned. So, and that's why we said uh, it is better for us to be on the safe side. It is better to be on the safe side. So, that's on on that. وَعَنْ حَبَان بِنْ وَاسِرِ From Haban, the son of Wasi, Anna Abahu, he said that his father Aban had told him, and now Sami Abdullah ibn Zayd bin Asim, that he had Abdullah ibn Zayd bin Asim, Yadkur, mentioning, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tawadda, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed ablution, وَفِيهِ In that explanation, وَمَسَ أَرَاسَوْ بِمَاءٍ غَيْرِ فَضْلِ يَدِهِ فَغَسَلَ يَدَيْهِ وَغَسَلَ رِجْلَيْهِ حَتَّى أَنْقَاهُمَا رَوَاءُ مُسْلِمْ In this hadith, it was said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم washed his two hands, washed his two legs, his two feet, Hatta and Kauma until they are what? They were clean. 
But there is this addition that Wamasa Rasau, he wiped his hair, bima him with water. Rei refund Leedi, not the left over water. That is, he took another water to rub his head. Now, is it permissible if I'm performing ablution, I washed my hands up to the elbows, my two hands. Then, my hand is still wet. Instead of taking new water to, rub my, to wipe my hair, the wet hand, I use it to do the wiping. This is what the Hadith is talking about the opposite. That is, Abdullah bin Zaid al-Mazini took another water. Apart from the water that was left in his hand, the remnant water, he took new water for the wiping of the edge. But what if one has used the remnant water to wipe the air rather than taking another one? Does it go? It goes. Because what matters is to wipe the edge. As long as you have done that with wet hand. Some scholars may kick against this because to them they may say this is what? Ma'un musta'amal the water that you have used. You have used the water to wash your hand. So the, the water has become used. So they will say that the water that you have used to do ablution, for instance, the dropping, eh, the drops cannot be reused to, watch, to, do another, to wash another part. So this is the argument of some. But there is no clear text that is knocking that. If I'm performing ablution in a bowl, for instance, there is no how water will be dropping in that bowl. The water that I've used will be dropping in the bowl. So, and that's why there is no argument in that. You can use what is left. You can use what is left as long as your hand is still wet. So, Abdullah bin Zaid al-Mazini performed ablution by taking new water to wipe his head rather than using his wet hand from the washing of the two hands to wipe the edge. Now there is a report that said he took new water to wipe his ears. But this is shav, is da'if, is weak. Is da'if, is shav. It contradicts other reports. And the other reports are the reports that he wiped his head with new water. Not he wiped his ear with new water. Wiping of the ear, we said, most, most scholars, they see it as mustahab, not compulsory. They see it as mustahab, not compulsory. There is a view, according to the Anabila, that see it to be compulsory. So whether you use wet hand from the rubbing of the edge to wipe your ear, or you take new water to do that, uh, there is no harm in it. This is permissible. When Amr ibn Shu'ib and Abi Anjaddi, from Amr, the son of Shu'ib, from his father and grandfather, and the Rajulan at the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for Ya Rasulallah, Kaifat Tuhur, he said that a man came to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, how do we? Do the cleansing. Father be mine. Fi ina in fagasala cafe salasan. He ordered for water. And he washed his hand, his palms three times. So magasala wajia u salasan. Then he washed his face three times. The hanabila, they will say rinsing of the mouth. And uh, in alien and exhaling water, I watch is, is included in the washing of the, the face. So Magasala Dirai Salasa, he washed his two hands three times. Summa Masa Birasi, 
he wiped his head what kala usbahi asabahatayni fi udnayh then he inserted he put his two fingers asabahatayn this is one they call sabaha the one that he used to do uh, the glorification of Allah while you are doing tashahud. So they call it sabaha. So at times people call it sababa. Sababa, the one that you used to, it's like you want to abuse somebody. When you are warning somebody, you use this finger, this same finger, to do warning for somebody. And you also use it for tasbih. When you are doing tashahud, for instance. So scholars would prefer to call it a sabaha than to, to, watch, to calling it a sababa. But the Arabs will call it sababa. A sababa that is the two hands, sorry, the two fingers that I use to do tesbih. So he put the sababa in his ears. So then, but in our name, some magasala, uh, we must have a name, he's why I was nay, or with some bahatani, but not with nay, with nay. So he used the uh, Abraham, this is the Abraham that is a thumb, uh, he used the thumb to rub the outer part of his ear. Then he put the sabaha inside his ear, then the thumb to rub the outer part of his ear. The sabaha, that is the uh, index, or what do they call it? The index finger. So he used it, he put it, he inserted it in his ear, then he used the sababa, so the arm, the thumb, to wipe the outer part of the ear. So this is what uh, was done. This is what was done. Then after he has done that, so Magasala Rijile Salasa, he washed his two legs three times. Don't forget in the hadith of Uthman, we have washing of the leg three times too. Washing of the leg three times. But this hadith, we have also washing of the leg three times. But he did not make mention of what? Rinsing of the mouth and inhaling and exhaling of water. So, which would be an evidence what, for those who say washing of the mouth and inhaling and exhaling water is not compulsory. But the Hanabila will say no. Messenger of Allah described how the face should be washed. So, but this is part of the evidence of those people. Likewise, in the hadith of... Uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, this was also not uh, mentioned. Then he said, Hakada al wudu This is how to perform ablution. Faman zada ala hadha aw naqas. So whoever adds to this or reduces from this, so called asa awa dholama, he has behaved wrongly and he has done injustice. Our Dolama wa Asa'a, Rawahu Ahmad, wa Abu Dawood, wa other loves you. Ahmad and Abu Dawood reported this, and this is the warning of Abu Dawood. Wabni Maja ibn Maja also recorded it, wa Nasai and Nasai. Wa Sahab ibn Khuzayma ibn Khuzayma also recorded it in a Sahih. Wa Isnadu Thabitun ila Amrin. The shame is authentic to Amr. Huh? فمن احتج بنسخته عن أبي، so whoever uses as evidence is نسخة that is his report that he took from his father and جدي from his جد his grandfather for who عنده صحيح، so to him this is what authentic that is عمرو بن شعيب عن أبي عن جدي عمرو بن شعيب عمرو son of شعيب from his father. They say Amr ibn Shu'ayb from his father. The father of Amr is Shu'ayb. Uh, and Abi and Jaddi. Why the Jaddu is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Asi. 
Abdullah bin Amri bin Ilaasi. So some of the scholars they have an uh, issue concerning the hadith of uh, uh, Amr bin Shu'aib from Abdullah bin Amr bin Ilaasi. So some scholars authenticated it, and that's why the author Ibn Abdul Adi said here that uh, the whoever is taking the Nusra. Because this is like a grandson seeing a write-up of his father and narrating from it. So narrating from it. So this of night they call it Wijada. It's Wijada. Wijada is for you to see something that was left by another person. A write-up. You saw the original copy and you take it. Scholars, do they take hadith like that? Take for instance, let's say the Prophet wrote something and a companion saw what the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wrote and he picked it. He did not take it from his mouth direct, but he saw what he wrote. Can we use that as evidence? So this is the issue. So Amri, uh, Amri, Amri bin Shuhaib is like the claim that he saw the write-up of a hadith left by his grandfather. So some said he took it from his father. And definitely his father took it from his own father, which is the grandfather of uh, Amri bin Shuaib. So this is the explanation. Now, the matter isn't a big issue. Wijada is somehow permissible. So Wijada is permissible. So this is what happens here. Now, he said, فَمَنْزَادَ عَلَىٰ هَذَا فَقَدْ أَسَاوَ تَعَدَّ وَظُلَمْ Whoever adds more than three, that is, he performs his ablution more than three times, Fakot Asa'a, he has done wrong, Wata'adda, he has transgressed, Wadolama, and he has acted with injustice. Wale Safiri, Wayati, Ahdi, Minum, Awu Nakas, or Ghaira, Abi Dawood, Wakot, Takalama, Fi, Muslim, Wagheiru, Allah, Wallahu, Alamu. So, I read earlier uh, in this same narration, I will not cause or reduce this. That addition is not authentic. The addition is not authentic. What is authentic is that whoever does more than three times has done wrong. Whoever does more than three times has done wrong. But if one does twice or once, there is nothing wrong in this. There is nothing wrong in this. So this is uh, the hadith of Amr ibn Shu'aib. Uh, Amr ibn Shu'aib from his father, from his grandfather, which is authentic according to the correct view. So these are various ways of performing ablution. But the most important thing is that you make sure water gets to the necessary places. Whether we do it once, once, as we shall explain later, or we do it three times, three times, or we do some three times, some twice. So if you remember, in the hadith of Abdullah bin Zaid al-Mazini, it was said that the washing of the hands up to the elbows was done twice instead of three times. So he did some of the parts three times. Why did he wash his hands twice? So if you see somebody performing ablution and the person is doing some parts of the ablution three times, some twice, so we shouldn't see the person as somebody who does not know how to do ablution. This is okay. It is correct. It goes. Even if he does some three times, some once, some twice, it's okay. They all have evidence from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as long as we get the, the message, which is to make water get to the necessary place. And we mentioned the other time that rubbing it is not compulsory according to majority of the scholars. So for water to get to the necessary place is what is compulsory. So the one who does not allow water to get to the necessary place, such a person has no ablution.
So this, Allah alam, is the little that you can take today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat and overlook our shortcomings. Subhanaka la umma bihamdik ashadan la ilaha illa ant astag furqa to relik. Now, if you have any question. Nam alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa la rasulullah wa The question has to do with uh, the way uh, Aisha and Asma corrected uh, somebody. Uh, I personally have not uh, heard about that. I know of uh, Al Hassan and Al Hussein correcting somebody while the person was performing ablution. So the man, it was said that the man was performing ablution wrongly and the two children, uh, the two boys were looking at the man. So they looked for a way of correcting the man. They went to him and said to him that uh, we want you to correct us. I and my brother, we are disagreeing on who knows how to perform ablution better. So, say, okay, perform your own ablution. Let me see. The first one did is. The second one also did it, did is. Said, you have done ablution the same way. So, definitely, both of you are right. I've not been doing it the way you are doing it, so I'm the one that is uh, wrong. So, and, and knowing the family from where they come, so this is something that is common. But, Wallahu alam, I've not seen the shame of that uh, Asa. It is commonly quoted. But where is the shame of that Asa? I don't know. Uh, but that of Asma and Aisha, I'm hearing it for the first time. So that of Hussein and Hassan was common on the tongue of the people. But where is the shame? I don't know. So I don't I can't tell whether it is authentic or not. Wallahu alam. No. Nam, <laughs> because they don't uh, restrict themselves to two times, three times. So in, in an attempt to uh, emulate their father or their parents in their ablution, so they continue doing it. They continue doing it. And ablution, you cannot go beyond three times. So if you go beyond three times, uh, you know that your ablution is three times already. Then you continue to do it. So you have uh, done injustice. In fact, some scholars will say you have no ablution. You have no ablution. But if you have not done your ablution perfectly, as we mentioned the other time, you have not used water to touch necessary place, if you do it ten times, it's not counted as one. Until you use water, you allow water to get to the necessary place. That is when it is counted as one. So but somebody who has done ablution the way it should be done, he did the first one, the second one, which is uh, Mustahabba, uh, the third one like that, then he wanted to do the fourth, or he wants to do the fourth one again. So the person has gone overboard. So as some scholars have said, that he has no ablution. Because that is not what Allah 
as instructed him to do on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. 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 The question is that can one pay one zakah in advance? Yes, one can do that in advance because it was established from uh, Ali radiallahu anhu I'm sorry, from the Prophet sallam, that he collected the zakah of two years from Al-Abbas, his uncle. He collected zakah of two years from Al-Abbas, his uncle. So this is established. So then it was also established when Messenger of Allah sallam, sent some people to go and collect zakah from people. It was said that Khalid bin Walid refused to give zakah. Likewise, somebody called Ibn Jamil. Then the third person was Al Abbas. So, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, reported to have said. Uh,